In this series of videos, we want to talk about quadratic functions. Now, we've already talked about how to graph these guys before as a nonlinear function using transformations and shifts and all that stuff. Um, but we want to look at it in more of an algebraic sense in terms of a function, specifically those quadratic functions. Now, a quadratic function is going to be of this form. f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay. Now, that is just the general form for a quadratic function. Okay. Let's just kind of go ahead and call that what it is off to the side. So this is the general form. There is another way of writing this. So we've got the general form. And here's a form that might look a little bit more familiar to you based on the graphing that we did for nonlinear functions a few sections ago. And that's a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k. And this is what we call the vertex form. Now, both of these forms have things going for them and also things that are going against them. So what I want you to understand is what we're going to be looking at for all of these quadratic functions. Okay? For almost every quadratic function, we want to be finding these things. We want to find the vertex which basically instantly gives us the axis of symmetry. Sometimes that's just referred to as the line of symmetry. We want to find the x-intercepts, if we have any. Find the y-intercept which, by the way, we will always have a y-intercept. Find the domain and find the range. These are the questions I'm going to be looking for. I'm going to give you a quadratic function and I'm going to say find all of this information. The vertex and the axis of symmetry are very closely related. Uh, the domain, here's a spoiler for you. For all of these quadratic functions that we have, and really for any polynomial function, the domain is going to be, it's going to be all real numbers. Uh, the range is really going to be connected to the vertex because wherever that vertex is, remember, your parabolas are going to look like this, little U-shaped things. So wherever your vertex is, if it opens up, it's going to be that Y value going to infinity. If you have a parabola that opens down, it's going to be negative infinity up to this y value. Your x-intercepts are kind of up in the air because we don't always have x-intercepts. It could be that you have, um, suppose this is your um, your x-axis. If your parabola is bouncing like this, it's never crossing that guy, so it could be that you don't have any x-intercepts. So we have to put all this information together to see where we are. Now, a y-intercept you are guaranteed to have because your domain is all real numbers, which means it must include zero, which is what you use to find the y-intercept. All right, so let's talk about these two different forms and what they're good for and what they kind of struggle with, okay? So for that general form, f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. This guy is the best for finding, oops, for the best for finding intercepts. Um, and we'll talk, we'll talk about the process for finding intercepts here in just a second. The vertex the vertex looks kind of messy. It's really not all that bad, you just have to be careful. It's negative b over 2a. That's going to be the x-coordinate. And since this is a function, if you have the x-coordinate, then you can easily find the y-coordinate coordinate simply by plugging that value into your function. Okay. So this basically is your vertex formula. Okay, it actually is written in the textbooks as vertex formula. So if you have 
quadratic equation, a quadratic function in this form. You identify your b and your a, you plug it in to find the x value, and you plug that guy in to find your y value. Which then means that your axis of symmetry, your axis of symmetry, now keep in mind, axis of symmetry is going to be a vertical line, which means it takes on the form x equals, and x is going to equal negative b over 2a. So, whatever this x value is, is going to be the same value that forms our axis of symmetry. Now for your, for your vertex form, so f of x is equal to a times x minus h quantity squared plus k. This guy is best for graphing. It's best for graphing and, and identifying the vertex. So if you guys remember the graphic that we did with nonlinear functions before, uh, you should understand why it's easy to find the vertex. Because when we were doing all the shifts and the translations before, whatever was inside told us how we shifted left or right. Whatever was outside told us how we move up or down. And so when we remove our parabola around, we're moving that key point, moving that vertex to its new spot. So if you said it was right five up four, you'd go right five up four. So that would give you the ordered pair five, four for the vertex. So the vertex is just going to be H K. Okay. So if it's in this form, you take these values, boom, there's your vertex, which then means that your axis of symmetry is x is equal to h. In the same way up here that x was equal to the x coordinate of the vertex, the axis of symmetry in the, uh, in the vertex form is going to equal the x coordinate for the vertex. So it still holds up. All right, so here's some little some, some notes that we have here for these guys. But no matter what form you have, let's talk about what we need to do to identify the intercepts. All right, so for identifying the y-intercept, okay, all you need to do is evaluate f of 0. No matter what kind of function you have, plug in 0 and that's going to help you get the y-intercept. Now the value itself is not the y-intercept because y-intercepts are supposed to be ordered pairs. So I want you to see how that is useful for this first form. I said it, this uh, standard form or general form is best for finding intercepts. If I plug in 0 here, that guy's gone, that guy's gone, and you're left with c. So very easily, you've got your y-intercept. Down here, if I plug in 0, I've got to plug in 0, but then I still have to square the h times a plus k. So there's a bit more work to do there. It's not as nice and simple as just saying, there it is. Okay. So to find, to find the x-intercepts, You need to solve the equation where you take your function and you have it equal to zero. Okay? Set your function equal to zero and solve them. Again, let's talk about why one form is better than another one. I said this form is best for finding the intercepts. Well, if you were to take this whole guy and then you say set it equal to zero. You now have a quadratic equation, and we spent several days talking about solving quadratic equations. You solve that quadratic equation, and the x values that come out, as long as they are real, those are going to lead to your x-intercepts. So, you solve this f of x equal to zero, 
and as long as those values are real, then you have x intercepts. Okay? So make sure that you understand. Make, let's make a big note of this. Okay? Only real solutions, only real solutions to setting f of x equal to zero will result in x intercepts. Because it's very likely that you could set this quadratic equal to zero and you get numbers that are imaginary, complex. Well, those guys don't fit with the graph because when we graph, we're graphing on the real xy plane, not on the imaginary plane. Okay, so this is all the basic information that we need to know that we need to know to graph. So now let's take a look at how we graph these guys.